What drives winning? What allows teams to win championships? But not just one championship, teams that win year after year. Follow me on this journey to talk with coaches all across the country to uncover what separates average teams versus champions. Hey, my name is Ryan Romano, and I'm your host here on the Championship Corner Podcast. Boom. Welcome back to this week's episode of the Championship Corner. I'm here with the legend, Mr. John Court. Um, has the mic drop intro, as he wants me to say, is like Court's now in session. So let's kick it off there. And um, as you enter your fifth year as uh, head coach over there with the Arizona Wildcats, let's just start there, a little backstory and like how you got into coaching and like leading up to where you are now. Sure, sure. Uh, th- thanks, for ha- thanks for having me on the show. Yeah. Uh, pre- appreciate it and uh, glad, glad I can do it. Hopefully I can uh, bring you more viewers and be entertaining. No but, doubt. Hey, the, the, the first question, you know, how did, how did I, how did I get into this? You know, how did I get into the sport of women's gymnastics? And it, for, for me, you know, that it's been a family thing. Uh, my mother was a coach for, you know, 33 years at Brown university. She started the program there. Um, you know, and just, I was brought up in a household of coaches my, uh, you know, my father was a high school teacher, coached wrestling. My mother worked at Brown University, so it was. Um, I, I could play a lot of other sports and always enjoyed the spectator aspect of gymnastics. And obviously, hearing all the stories when you have a parent who's a coach and you know and comes home and talks about this and this, and I'm like, I, I feel like you know she was talking a different language, so I had to yeah. try to update, you know, update myself as best I could. I was going to the library, you know, that's when people went to the library. You couldn't Google everything, mm-hmm. so. Yeah. Um, you know, and just you get all you get all the information, and then it's like, hey, this is something that I I want to try and and do, and it was never something that I was forced to do for my parents. I actually went to college for business. I have a you know master's degree in you know, in athletic administration, a bachelor's degree in marketing. It was not the turn. It, it it was not what I expected to do. Yeah, um, certainly. But I am so glad that I did it. I'm blessed that I did it. I feel like honestly, I haven't worked a day in my life. Um, and you know my both both my parents have you know certainly certainly passed away. My mom was inducted in the Hall of Fame a year ago. We just did her Hall of Fame induction at Brown University, which was uh, really special. And um, you know she would certainly be be happy with uh, what what's going on here at Arizona as well yeah. as her, her other team, Brown University. And uh, I would say she was my biggest fan, but also my biggest critic at the at the same time. And uh, you know she didn't like sometimes the tie that I wore. Or, <laughs> you know, asked me to smile more on camera. So, um, it's just it's been a great it's been a great run. No year has 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 been the same between going from assistant coach to head coach, which is you know that's that's a book all in itself, and that you know that certainly that process of switching chairs. Um, and all, yeah, what are some of those big like I guess transitions you had to make from that? It's like going from player to coach. It's um everything now stops with you. And I, I think that's something it's always easy to say, well, if I was over here, I would do it this way or do it that yeah, way, or do yeah. it this way, that way. Um, you basically just have to take everything that you have learned in your time, whether it's in your sport or in, from other coaches in other sports and take all the good um, and, and try to adopt a little bit of it, but you still have to make it your own. Because you yeah, can't be yeah. like anybody else. I always say everybody else is taken. You have to be yourself, like that. and that's that is the, that's the most important thing. But you also have to say, okay, what didn't work? What ideas didn't work in this year or this year or with this team or with that team? Because sometimes an idea that worked with another team might work with this team, right? Right. You know, and vice versa. So it, it's really you know going ahead and looking at that stuff, and then saying, you want to know what? At the end of the day every decision that you make is going to affect probably 30 people Mm -hmm. Um, between yourself, your coaching staff, your support staff, the athletes on your team, every decision that you make. Yeah. You know, and and that's just, you know, that goes far beyond Kip Cass Anstead. It's the governance of a program. And when you're an assistant coach, sometimes you, you, you might not think that way. Yeah, you might not you might not have been asked to think that way. Sometimes the responsibilities that you have are very, it's they're categorized. You're here, 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 here. As a head coach, you're you're everywhere. But certainly, for myself, 
and management style that I use to, to run the program, I rely a lot on the support staff and especially the, the assistant coaches, you know? Yeah. yeah so what are those, so what are some of those things too is obviously like it changes year to year from like the, you get, you lose some athletes, some years you bring some news in. So obviously like personalities tend to change. What are some of those things that uh, for you now as a head coach, just try to keep consistent? Like what's like, Hey, like this is, part of our identity so to speak and this is who we are and I want this to say the same year in and year out for the most part be a great person you have to you have to know who you are yeah you, you really really do um it starts there and I could say maybe it starts there for a lot of coaches but you be be, be a great person uh, a lot of that's going to going to come down to it's going to come down to parenting the old-fashioned thing is going to come down to parenting and you know certainly how parents raise their kids and we want this, the person that we're looking at, this prospect, you know, when we talk to her parents and talk to her coaches and talk to her, you know, her guidance department at school, we want great reviews. Yeah. 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 You know, let's say this person is, go she's really, really good now. She's going to mature into something that is great as a person. She's going to know the things that are going to make her happy year in and year out before she suits up for us, before she goes to class. So that, that's the first thing. Be, you know, be a great person and you have to define what makes you happy. You have to know these things. Second act is the, the academic piece is we love highly intelligent, smart students. Yeah. <laughs> that, 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 is, that is for sure. And, um, you know, we've led the, the athletic department here and, you know, and GPA across the, all the sports, I think two out of the last four years. If we didn't win it, we came in second. And that's part of the growth. That's part of the recruiting process. Mm -hmm. you, you have to put those people together that that do that. When they get a B, they get upset. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, when I got when I when I got a B in high school, I, I wasn't upset. I was like, hey, I'm I'm in, I'm in the I'm in the top two. <laughs> I'm with you. That's one of those school, is I have top conversations top. with them. I'm like, I'm like, so like you've never skipped a class They're like no nah, like I don't ever miss a class I'm like oh okay <laughs> yeah I'm not not gonna go there you know as far as my tennis records you know back yeah. when I was in school. I'm, I'm, ha I'm there you know you know when they come in and with you know four point oh's and three nines and honors and AP, AP stuff you know we know that there's going to be a great foundation yeah. for them to succeed academically and we combine that with the resources that we have here at Arizona and we have a lot of athletes that are in the honors college or they're in nationally ranked majors here on campus. We know that they're going to go on, they're going to graduate. Everyone's graduated in four years and maybe you have two options, go to grad school or get a job. Yeah. I mean, because ultimately that, that, that is a large, large part of our job. Yeah. 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 We, have, we have, we have to be able to get them ready for that. Yeah. I was going to say too, back to your first point, like, um, and using the terms of, of like knowing who you are, I think like for me, that is like, oh my God, like that would solve so many just world problems in and of itself. If people just like genuinely knew who they are. So like, as you're recruiting or even like, as you bring them in and get the, get to know them on like more of a personal level, once they show up on campus is how well do they really know themselves and like how much time do you kind of spend in helping them? Cause I always say it's like, they have everything inside of them. It's just allowing them to uncover all those things. They're just, they're like doors that are locked. They just need the keys to unlock them. And then like everything flows from there. So I guess like how challenging do you find that? Um, and then how do you continue that growth of, of like that development once they get on campus? Well, during the during the recruiting process is where a lot of it happens, uh, because you have to. Recruiting is about relationships. Yeah. It's about time. There's no easy fix. There's no. It's not instant oatmeal. Yeah. And I think yeah. that when you're willing to put time into people, but they have to be willing to put put time into you too. Right. And it's just not telling someone, you know, hey, this is what you can do for me, athletically. It just it's just getting to know them as a person. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it is. It is. It is so important. It's so important. What What are the things that make you happy? What What are the things that you do on a day to day that make you who you are, yeah. and ultimately that, that make you the the athlete that you yeah. are? Maybe it's things that are in the gym. Maybe it's things that are out of the gym. 
you know, maybe different things motivate you. Maybe different people mentor you. But yeah. have, having all those things in discussions, as well as, hey, you know, what's, you know, I always say, what's, uh, well, the top five songs that are played on your phone? I like that. <laughs> and, uh, there's a lot of differences. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, I prefer FaceTimes over phone calls. I think uh, FaceTimes in the recruiting process are they're definitely bolder, especially like on the first call or second call. Yeah. But you get to see uh, how much someone is really just into the call. How, what, what are they vested in? Right. And, uh, I just think it makes it a, a little bit easier, but you always have to throw in some icebreakers sometimes to, to, get, the, <laughs> to get the conversations going. And um, at the end of the day, you know, sometimes they, early on in the process, you know, they, they don't realize that, hey, you know, we're, we're people too. <laughs> you know, and uh, and when when they realize, like, wow, I can actually converse with the with this person, yeah, and, and yeah. certainly and, and go and go back and forth. And once the, the comfort level gets established, the conversations usually really really flow and uh, in positive places. And then you end up talking. You know, certainly, I have prospects I talk to every single week for the last year and a half. Yeah, yeah. yeah certainly, yeah. our our twenty our twenty three classes. Is like that. I think the only time that we haven't talked is uh, probably when they go on vacation or when I go on vacation. Yeah. Yeah, that's such a, like, I always think of you guys, like, as coaches, as, um, like, more so, like, really in, like, the relationship business, because, like, once you can build those connections, I feel like the performance almost kind of takes care of itself because they have that trust. They have that connection in you. They know that you're um, genuinely want their best interest, whatever that may be. Um, sometimes maybe they don't see it initially, but down the road that that light bulb moment um, kind of goes off. And so I think it's interesting too that like you talk about having those face-to-face -face conversations because for most of those kids, when you can start recruiting them, it's like this, like having that conversation with you is potentially like fulfilling like their lifelong dream and you and your guys sport, like for most of them are like, that's the pinnacle, right? Like they want to be an NCAA division one um, college gymnast. And so it's, I would be intrigued like to almost be a fly on the wall in some of those initial conversations as it's like, like, you could be the door of opportunity for me. So that's really cool, really unique. Well, I, I just think it's uh, everything gets started with a conversation. Yeah. Uh, that, that is for sure. But I am happy, you know, we, as a coach's association, you know, we change the rules of, uh, of first contact and we move things uh, down the line a little bit. Um, so everyone's a little bit older. I think that's, that's it made. It was wild there for a minute. You know, it was, it was wild west out there. <laughs> you know, like, just it, it was a little everything was a little too soon yeah uh, yeah yeah. <laughs> sure. i don't i don't miss that i don't know so, uh going back to um like you you mentioned your mom starting the program like what was the catalyst for that like obviously a being a head coach is a huge undertaking in and of itself but to like start a program is a i feel like it's a whole different monster so like what was her like, what was that catalyst? What was that driver for her, like, wanting to start that program? Well, I think it was something. She was approached to do that. Yeah. Um, you know, and this is, you know, you're looking at just different times. Yeah. Early 70s, late 60s or early 70s on, on college campuses. It's, you know, starting something then is not like starting something now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. The, the obstacles are, the obstacles and the, you know, the, the daily battles are, are very, very different today. Than they, you know, than they were then. I just think she, uh, she was a dancer out in out of New York. She went to the School of the Arts for a little bit and uh, had a passion for for gymnastics. Anything she was passionate about, you know, she put her best foot forward. Yeah. And that's what that's what she, you know, she she taught the ladies on her team. You know, it's like you know, she she taught them how to fight. You know, how to yeah. mature, how to fight. You know, how to move forward and, and get what you want out of life. So, you know, her team, I think, and took that piece of her pe personality and they. You know, they, they molded it into their culture. Yeah. Year, year in, year out. What's one of the things that has always stuck with you from her in terms of coaching? Ooh, um, don't let anybody take away your happiness. Okay. Yeah. That, that, that one that one sticks. Um, just because 
you know, your, you know, my, my happiness is, you know, that that's that's mine. I'm, I don't want you to take that away from me, whatever yeah, whatever yeah. mood that you're in or whatever the you, you know the things that you're doing. Um, that's what that's what keeps me going. You know, that that's my juice. That's my why. And I think that that that's important. It's important to know that each day, just whether, whether you're coaching or not. Hundred percent. It's just, yeah. just important to know. Um, the, the things that just, you know, that put a smile on your face that make you happy. And it's like, it's to say, Hey, you know, this, 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 this is mine. You can come along, you be a part of it, but you're not, you're not going to take it away. Yeah. I think, I feel like too, in like, and I feel like this has helped like propel me along like my journey too, because that right there, what you just said, like I would qualify it as, is like emotional awareness for a lot of people is become like a lost art for most and so they wait for the thing or the person to be happy right like I'll be happy when I have the relationship or I'll be happy when I win the championship yeah. versus as you're saying it's like 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 nobody's gonna dictate the way that I feel about waking up today and getting to do like what right. I actually get to do and I feel like a lot of that 18, 19, 20, 21 year old range, and honestly, probably even down and maybe even <laughs> further, further up the ladder. It's kind of become a lost art in terms of just allowing the simple things to make people happy. <laughs> well, sim simple things go a long way. And little things yeah. go a long way. And I would say if you do enough little things right, which we, I guess is a term for process. Yeah. 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 You know, we, we do enough little things right, then we're going to get the end result that we want whether that could that could be in life that can be in sport that yeah can be, that that can you know that can be in gymnastics and you know for us if we're judging a competition you know we have a whole board in our gym of metrics that we want to hit that we feel that we control every single competition every single practice you know one thing that we always tell our athletes hey let's control the controls yeah. whoever made up that quote should be getting paid because we all <laughs> use it and i don't know where to send the money to but um, but it's true every everyone uses it and it it makes a lot of sense control the controls and if you do enough things right if you do enough little things right day in and day out and you practice at a high level you're going to get the end result that you that you want yeah that you want. and you want to do that week in and week out yeah, that's another one that's super powerful. I talk about it in terms of like, not only are you in control, but like you're the creator too. So it's like you get to create the person that you want to be. You get to create the season that you want to have. You get to create the relationships that you want. Um, and again, it goes back to, I feel like so many people, it's like naturally, I don't know if it's society. I don't know if it's parenting. I don't know if it's other coaches. I don't know where it is, but it's like most people tend to fall back into like reactive mode versus like <laughs> being really proactive. And I like that you said that it's like, here's a whole board of everything that we can control. Focus on this. You'll, you're, you're going to get X, Y, Z. It doesn't really matter at the end of the day after that. Because mm -hmm. when we do all those things, and if we hit 80% of our goals, you should you should be happy with that. You should not walk away yeah. upset because maybe you scored this or scored that. But sometimes we really you can't control that because today's you know this week's nine nine five or ten could be last week's nine eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nine, nine eight two five. We don't know. You know, we we don't know. And but by doing these things week in and week out we can we can control it more we can get into better ranges for success yeah and i feel like this resonates with y'all sport too like the idea and the concept of of like trying to be quote unquote perfect is like the ultimate shot in the foot like <laughs> happiness killer because it's like you can have all these high standards but like having high standards and trying to be perfect are two way different things. <laughs> yes, and yes, I think people are. fail to realize that. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, uh, per perfection, you know, what is, what is perfect? What is yeah. perfect? And I think that for some, it's okay. It was, it was no mistakes, but, but for someone else who's judging that 
they can always find a mistake. Right. You know, it, but it, it doesn't mean that it wasn't elite. It wasn't, it wasn't best. You know, it's, if you say it is, and if you, if you come to me or any one of the coaches is, well, you know what? I gave it all. My tank is empty. I left, I left it all out there. I train, I trained my butt off. I did everything right in practice. That's it. That's all, that's all, that's all you got. Yeah, that, that, yeah, that's all we can ask for. Yeah. At that point, that that's okay. That's okay. Now let's get 23 more routines of people that are going to say the same thing. Yeah. And it's going to be, it's going to be a good night when we do that. Um, but the focus can't always be, you know, certainly on that score on, on the end result. So much, so much goes into it. You know, so much goes, so much goes into it. And I, I always say that there are 24 hours in a day. We get them for, let's say three in practice, three to four. Those other hours are going to determine what happens in those three. Yeah. I'm, no, no, no. I'm a firm believer of that. And that's when I always say you have to decide and know that you know who you are and you have to know the things that make you go. Yeah, you have to know yeah. your wife, know, know what's making you happy because those 21 hours are going to affect those three. Almost to a point they can control those three. Yeah. Yeah, 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 without a doubt, and it, because if it's just those three hours on the focus of the focus, you know, someone could be, you know, not fulfilling everything that they need in the other twenty-one hours, you know. But they have these, these three are great. Okay, we have some great routines, but maybe this person isn't where, you know, she she wants to be as a person, and and, that, and that's a problem. Yeah, 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 you know, that's a problem. You know, we want we want to be able to elevate that, elevate those twenty-one hours. You know, for for her, that that's 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 super important, and it's just, you know, it's just not about the gymnastics. I've never just been, you know, certainly about just the gymnastics. I, I would say if you can sit next to me on a flight for three hours and not talk about gymnastics, I'm perfectly happy. <laughs> it, just, it just means you have you just have a lot more. You, know, you have a lot of things going on, a lot of different conversational pieces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think too, going back to those other like 20, 21 hours is like helping people understand because like, oh my God, I feel like A, athletes across the board. And then I think honestly, just people in, ten, in, in general, like probably the number one thing that they bitch and moan about is like not having enough time. And I'm like, maybe, but like, what, what type of energy are you putting into the time that you actually have? Because like, to me, like that's the biggest thing. And I can like think back to, certain projects and things that I've had to do. And it's like, I usually have these hour, two hour, three hours, like window blocks, but I know I have something like after that. And so I like conserve that energy during that one or two hours when I could have utilized that. And I think when people start to understand, it's like, I need to be investing my energy or um, recovering my energy better versus like, because like you're not going to get more time, but you can, ramp up energy and recover energy and things like that and so like helping people understand that like elon's got 24 hours too <laughs> right I mean, you, you, there's, but you know your limitations you know yeah. your expectations you know your limitations and you know what hey i got this much in the tank but i need to have this much in the tank at this yeah. time yeah. at this moment and you judge that and you base your actions on that yeah and that yeah. helps you perform be at your peak when you need to be yeah, yeah, yeah. So heading into, I know you guys are about to uh, get season ramped up and things yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. What are, I don't know, let's go three. What are two or three things that make this team unique versus some of the other teams that you've coached? Uh, this this one is special, that, that's for sure. And, um, you know, it's a, it's a great group that's been put together over the course of, I'm in year five, so it's, you know, it's, Four, four years worth, which yeah, is really yeah. one full recruiting cycle when you when you think about it. Mm -hmm. um, from out of high school to to on the team right now. So that that in itself means that everybody that's here, everyone was recruited under the same umbrella, everyone's heard the same message, everyone has seen the same things. Yeah. And hopefully they have the the same understanding. But everybody knows the expectation. There are no surprises. Yeah, that yeah. Ma that makes it easy. Certainly, with this group, you know they 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 know they know the expectations. 
They they know the coaches. They have faith in each other. They're they're a great family. Yeah. And that that's the backbone of this group. You know, they love gymnastics. They love competing for Arizona. And they want to do well. And they want to support each other. That, that's what that's what's special, certainly, about this. The easiest part of my day is the time spent, certainly, in the gym. That's, I think mean, most coaches will say that. Yeah. You know, yeah, that, yeah. that is for sure. So, you know, that is one thing. You know, the the, the second piece, I think that was probably like five things, actually. But, you know, <laughs> what, Let's what, go. What make, Let's go. It's so special. Yeah, I mean, it's it just, um, they they just, they're, they're, they're a group. I just feel that they they love life. They love they love gymnastics. Um, they are they're fundamentally sound on the events. We have events that I feel like we're really strong on. We have athletes that I feel like you want to know what they can really push the envelope on these events. Um, you know we have you know we have two athletes that have been repped at NCAA championships the past the past couple of years. You know we were you know this close to to making it to the Sweet 16, and we returned you know 23 or 24 of those routines. Wow. So that's kind of you know the you know the the sparks already been set to the fire, but and that was last year at regionals. And when you get so close to something, it's like, hey, how how do we finish that? You know, so we want to where we're strong, we want to stay stronger. Where we're weaker, we we're trying to get stronger. You know, that is for sure. So we so we can get more more balance. But we have a great group of core athletes. You know, certainly that we use is you know. You know your uh, your friend Caroline being you know yeah, certainly being one of them doing you know doing doing three events for us, and we we put them we put all of them together. That's about twenty routines, and then we have a lot of specialists that also come into the fold as well. And I think that for us, you know, we're we're looking to just, we want to pick up where we left off. Yeah, for sure. You know, that that's one of our goals. It's also one of our fears to say, okay, suppose suppose we do it and it's great. Well, suppose we can't do it. You know, did we did we did we fail in, in in that aspect? And it's something that when you want something so bad, you you know, you hold yourself to a standard. Um, it can be great when it goes the right way, and when it goes the wrong way, it's like, okay, how do we recover from that? How are our coping mechanisms? You know, certainly going to be either way, whether we succeed or if we you know if we stumble a little bit. Right. But I I, I feel with this group, if we have something that's a concern, we can bounce back really really quick. If it's something that if the train's rolling and it's, you know, we're just, you know, we're running downhill and it's, it's going well, then we'll, we'll, we'll stay doing that. And I think that's, um, that's what you have to be able to do because you can't just be, you can't always be high, high all the time and do everything based on emotion. It has to be steady. Yeah. You know, sometimes I say when your gymnastics is boring, you are ready to go because it means whether you're home or away whether it's hot, out, cold out, doesn't matter where you are. Doesn't matter, you know, it doesn't matter if we have the red Leo on the blue, but they all have sparkles. You know, that that that's for sure. <laughs> and, you know, Taylor does a great job at uh, certainly picking those out. She does a lot yeah. for our program. Um, that they stay steady. And uh, that they're able to control the control the emotions of putting themselves in the moment of where they need to be. And flipping that switch because when they salute and and when the time before that, as a coach, it's sometimes one of the most powerless feelings you're going to get. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it has nothing to do with you at that point. You, yeah, you know, I always say it's like if we do our job Monday through Thursday, then Friday night, you know, we're just, we're cheerleaders. Yeah, at that point because you know you you got this, and we wouldn't put you out there if you didn't have it. Yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. You know, go out there and go out there and let it rip. You know, if you're gonna miss, I would say it's like go big. If if you if you miss big, you know, it's something that we work on. But never never hold back. Yeah. Never never hold back, and you know, certainly and 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 be conservative. Always, you know, it's like we we like our gymnastics to be aggressive. So how is it? I'm sure there are a lot of unique personalities on every year sure. on the team so how is it juggling different personalities because i've got one child of my own at home and i feel like whoa i can't imagine essentially being in charge of 20 kids and 20 different personalities every single day <laughs> well it does take a it does take a village right you know, yeah. that, that is for sure so well, bless kate yeah. bless kate 
Shout well, out. You're blessed, Kate. Kate. I, I know Kate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is for sure. Kate can handle a lot. Kate can handle you. you know, that, this that, is that. also true. <laughs> Actually, you uh, and, um, so I think that it takes a village, you know, and, you know, Arizona Gymnastics is a family, you know, and, you know, th this year, I mean, it's myself, obviously, as, as, as head coach, Taylor Spears is my associate head coach. Um, Dallas Passer is an assistant. It's his first year. It's Kylie Craftwell's it's her first year with us. So if you have four coaches and you have two of them new, that's 50% staff turnover. And it's like, okay, well, what do you look for in your coaches to, 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 to help with what you just said? Yeah. Because we're all different, but we all want the same things. But we all can cover a lot of ground. Yeah. With the personalities of the athletes on our team. And depending, you know, what what needs, if it's a push, if it's a pull, you know, if 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 you gotta be the hammer, if you if you gotta be the, you know, the the happy unicorn that you know that, that comes in and sometimes just <laughs> uh you know. Drops rainbows and butterflies, rainbows and unicorns and candy everywhere. <laughs> it's a bit, I would say it's a, you know, I think there's a, I think there's a personality, you know, certainly for it all. Yeah. And just like within the team, I don't, I don't have team captains, um, just because I, I believe that leaders emerge and leaders should have the opportunity to emerge every single year because it's different. And I think sometimes when people are labeled, um, but I have total faith in the captain system. That's not to say that this, you know, this goes against that. But sometimes when someone is labeled, you know, let's say with a title, it someone else might feel, well, I can't speak up. I can't be heard because I don't have this title. And sometimes that title, title can go to someone else's head at the same time. And it's like this way, guys, everybody has an equal voice. Mm-hmm. Everyone can speak up, speak, you know, speak their minds, say your opinions, come in the office. There's four, there's four offices, there's four doors, there's four coaches. You can come in anytime, day, night, call, text, FaceTime, walk in. If you, you have, if you have something that you want to talk about and, and, and they know that, Yeah. you know, and they know that. And, and, and that's the, you know, that's the inclusive piece to it. That's how, that's how they grow. Yeah, and I'm a big fan. Uh, as of the last like year or two, and the way that you kind of handle it in terms of of like not necessarily, I think for some teams it might work, but I think for the majority, the idea of like labeling captains or leaders or each year, I think the overarching thing what it completely destroys is any kind of creativity and any, any ability for 18, if there's two captains out of 20 the, of the other 18, like you said, it's like they're waiting for those two to like come up and formulate the answer. And then maybe they'll chime in after that versus just allowing their ideas and voice and all those things to flow. Um, mm -hmm. And then it starts to, because I think of it in their brains, they see it as like a hierarchy. Um, they think they almost, diminish like their own role slash responsibility um, among the team, especially if they're young, right? Like if it's a freshman yeah. coming in or a sophomore and they just kind of haven't quite got their voice out there as much as, you know, they would like, mm -hmm. or you guys would like as staff. Um, I don't know that I, I, there's that like internal fear of like, yeah, but that's not my role. Like I don't speak right. up in those meetings. That's not for me. So we, want, we, want, we want you to speak up. We, yeah. want you, we, want, we, want, we want we want to hear that opinion come out of you, especially when we know that you have one. Yeah. You know, I, I always say, hey, say it here. Don't say it once everybody walks out. <laughs> yeah. that, that doesn't do any good. It doesn't help. <laughs> say, say it when we're all here. And I, I always say sometimes, don't worry about how it comes out. We'll, we'll, yeah. fig we'll figure that out, you know, certainly in uh, – in, in, in conversations, but um, it's different every year, but we haven't had the captains, you know, in a, in a few years, this, this works. Um, you know, Mike, Mike Clark is one of our uh, sports psychologists. He works with our team specifically, um, you know, every few weeks he, he comes in and um, just works with them on different pieces. You know, certainly some things are just, uh, it could be hot topics. It could be something that's going on in college athletics. Yeah. He, um, you know, he has full reign when he when he does that. He's uh, great for Arizona Athletic, great for our program. Um, you know, certainly as coaches, we, you know, we want to 
make sure that we keep a lot of open doors, uh, provide a lot of feedback. Uh, I mean, every every single day, we grade the uh, the members of our team on their attitude and their effort, plus the uh, the athletic part of the assignment. Every day, yeah, every event, and that's open. That that no secret there. They yeah, can come yeah. in, see their stuff anytime. They come in every four weeks. We have meetings about it. We say, hey, we got a lot of greens, a lot of yellows. That, that, you know, that's a, that's a good thing. You know, but we also look for trends of, you know, modifications or let's say workouts that were not up to standard. So we can say, hey, you know, if we're trending one way, it lets us turn that around and lets us have some discussions, certainly outside of the gym about it. Because just because you have a, uh, if you have a great workout, let's just have a streak of great workouts. But if you don't have a great workout one day, it's just sometimes it's just not your day. Right. You, right. you can still have an awesome attitude. It just didn't click that day. Yeah. You know, it doesn't make you, it doesn't make you a bad gymnast. It just means you had a bad day. You know, yeah. that, that, that's okay. We'll have, we'll have a better, we'll have a better one tomorrow. You know, I think it's, um, but having that, having that feedback and you can never over communicate. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Whether it's with coaches or with, with, um, with your teams. And I think that's something that, you know, throughout time, you know, I, I know it's something that I've had to work on. You know, you go from saying little to saying a lot to to over saying, and sometimes you feel like you're repeating yourself. But <laughs> you have you have to be as consistent as possible when relaying information. Yeah. yeah. Relaying knowledge, when you're when you're relaying knowledge, um, it's it's just it's very very important. So if uh, if over communicating is a is a crime, would be guilty. You know, certainly <laughs> certainly of it. That's okay. We'll do the time for it. But I think it's something that it does help. Uh, everybody that is in our program, one hundred percent. Yeah. yeah, and I think everybody wants to know where they stand, right? From an athletic Absolutely. standpoint, like where they are in their relationship with you. Whether there's, I, the only word that comes to my mind is beef. <laughs> whether there's beef between the athlete and the coach, um, yeah. or if there's just misunderstanding, right? Like in terms of of they thought you were saying one thing and you were trying to communicate something else. And so I think that like having that daily feedback is like super powerful versus I think a lot of, I always say, you know, even when I communicate, especially with the athletes and even some coaches, I was like, the problem in um, most athletic programs is like they have preseason meetings and postseason meetings and like, everything in between is kind of like up and down, right? Unless right. they need something, unless they um, come to you specifically and say like, hey, I want to sit down or vice versa. If you say, mm -hmm. hey, I need to sit down with you. But to have that built in, I think it's super powerful. I think it's we have it all built in. And, and if, uh, and that, but that's just for daily practice and competitive gymnastics. You know, if that's going to be, the, if that's what's going to be the conversation that day, then that's what's going to be the conversation that day. We have all this information. If it's about, you know, academics, or it's about, you know, you personally, or it's about a social, you know, social things, it's important to identify where concerns are. Yeah, yeah. I always, I use the four bucket analogies in a lot of my meetings. I said, this, if there's four buckets on the table, you want each one to be even, but you control which one goes high, which one goes low, and which one overflows. And I said, you don't want you know, your social bucket to overflow into your academic bucket. And then the academic bucket's going to be a little bit low. You know, you want your bucket, you know, to, you know, the things that you need to be happy. You got to know that those yeah. you know, mine aren't going to be the same as yours. Yours aren't going to be the same as mine. Yeah. But we have to, we have to know those things. Those, those are ours. We have to know what type of student we want to be, what we want to major in, what, my, what do I want my internship to be? What does my GPA need to be? How much do I need to study? How little do I need to study? You know, why did this new series on Netflix just cut into my, <laughs> cut into my studying and things like that? Um, and then, we, you know, we have the apparatus piece, vault bars, beam floor. Yeah, and, yeah. you know, we take, you know, we take care of that. We have competitive expectations for everyone in our program. You know, what, what does that mean? Well, as a competitive expectation, we want to work out, you want to work out on that 985 level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, to, to put it in a scoring perspective you have you put uh, a lot of those together it's going to be a competitive night you know win, win lose or draw and then lastly we have this you know we have that social bucket because 
coming in at 17 or 18 and leaving at 22 and 23. There's a lot going on there. <laughs> yeah. A lot yeah. Going on. <laughs> yeah. And there's going to be a lot of good. And there's also going to be some stuff that lands you in the coach's office. <laughs> hey, what, what are we doing here? And yeah. I think that with that, though, I always say it's like, know what you want. Drive socially. You got to make some mistakes. Don't let you, if you make a mistake, don't let it become a habit, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and but I tell I, I tell everyone from the team, including the staff, I said, you know, there's a time and a place to say certain things of anything. And I say, if you have some, if you have something to say, and you know that I might not like it, you can knock on my door and sit down in the office, and just I said, say what you got to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I say, you have something to say, you should say it. And um, you know, sometimes it's something I don't want to hear which is fine. I don't want people to tell me things that I just want to hear. I don't need, you know, I don't need that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's tough for you to grow as a yeah. person and your relationship with that person. If they're not willing to like open up and kind of say like, like this pissed me off or whatever. It's like, Oh, okay. It allows you to take a step back and like, did I say this the right way? Is that really what I meant? Oh, it's, like, so, it's so important. Any, any, everything. And, and we're, and we're all, you know, we're all guilty of things. We're all not guilty of things, you know, when it, when it comes to that and, you know, and whether you say something or it just could be what, so how someone perceived yeah. something that you did say or that you didn't say. So you have to be able to, to step back and always have a conversation. You have to be willing to have that conversation, you know, because your coping mechanisms you, can always be worked on. It doesn't matter what age you're at. Yeah. yeah. That is, that is for sure. And um, you should have, I always say the coaches should have more than the athletes. We're older and more experienced with life. So we, we should, yeah. you know, it's, it's, like, it's should. like, it's like gray hairs. We should have more, you know, <laughs> it's the same. or, you know, no hair and you're, 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 you're hey. that's, that's a look. You know, that's, that's, that's a look, you know, that's good these days. Oh. But I, I think that uh, just to have those open doors and have that space, you know, some of the best, I've gotten some of the best results um, sometimes I hear people because someone came up, an athlete came up to me and, and just ripped me up. Yeah. yeah. Basically verbally. And I sit there and I took it and then you said, and then it's like, you want to know what? I guess she really needed to do that. We grew from it. And it's like, wow, look where it goes, you know, look where it goes from there. And, um, and that, and that's okay. Yeah. 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 You know, well, it's yeah. your own feedback, right? It gives you direction. Cause I can think of even with like, before I leave and con- kind of calling it a debriefing is asking those teams. I'm like, like, do you like this direction? Like, don't BS me because like, I need to know, are we headed in the right direction or not? Cause if we're not like, and this sucks and it doesn't resonate at all. It's like, that's on me. And I got to go figure this out. <laughs> mm-hmm. No, and, and you'll, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll figure it out. And, I think that's a lot of what we're all trying to do. We're all trying to, you know, we want to have way more good days than not days. We, yeah, not good days. we want to do more little things. So the big things get taken care of. Yeah. You know, it's, um, and, and no day is the same. This is very, you know, no, no, no day is the same in college athletics. doesn't matter what sport you, you coach, but we try to find that consistency. Certainly you want to have consistency with your program, you want to have consistency with your decisions. Yeah. You want to have consistency with your practice results or as a practicing at a high level, but hopefully all that will lead to consistency with your competitive results. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just, it's, it's just the building blocks. One, two, three, four, basic math. I try to keep it that way. The, the math, <laughs> the, the math, some of the, 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 the team takes, I, I flunk. So, <laughs> yeah. they're uh, way, way smaller than me. Last yeah. question: If you could drop one golden nugget, one word of wisdom, one phrase, one something for an athlete, a parent, a coach, anybody, life in general, what would that be? Mm. Drop it, drop, drop in one, huh? Yeah, mic drop. Mic, mic, mic drop. I, I think it's uh, be yourself. Yeah. Be yourself. Everybody else is taken. That's I do that, like that, that. That that's a big one. Be yourself. I love it, man. I love it. Well, I appreciate you jumping on. Um, you guys get kicked off the first week of January. January down in Columbus at Ohio State should be a lot of fun. Um, with, with the three teams that are there, excited to see everybody. Uh, I used to work with Meredith. Uh, oh, okay, I didn't so, know that. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I get to 
get to go to Columbus and then uh, actually I'm sure I'll see her and her family, which, which will be awesome Yeah. You know, sometime, yeah. sometime during the, the weekend. And, you know, we had a great showcase here last week. 500 plus people show up. Awesome. Awesome, yeah. awesome way to start some things. So we're, we're excited to get started. Um, hopefully a better year. This year, we're really expecting some high things. You know, we want to be that Sweet 16 team. We want to be in the, you know, the top four in the Pac-12. And, uh, you know, ho- hopefully, like I said, it all, it all, it all, it all goes our way. That's yeah. what we have happen. Yeah. Well, we know we have all the pieces. We know we have the culture. We know we have the personnel. And, I love uh, it. Just, just looking forward to it. You know, hopefully, you get uh, some good stuff in our stockings. You know, <laughs> <laughs> in a week that that help us out there. And we'll, uh, and it warms up a little bit, but uh, I appreciate the time. Thank you for the call on um, doing this. Uh, ho- hopefully, I didn't suck. You know, nah, you're, you're the best. Or, you're the be- best anything. one yet. But uh, appreciate you what, what you're doing. Uh, certainly, um, just in business. But you know, look at looking. I, I look and see the, you know, how the teams that you work with react to you and write so positive. You know, they write so so many positive things about you. And I know that um, you know you're a large contributor to the individual success, but, you know, certainly also to the team success of the people uh, that you're working with. You touch You're touching a lot of lives, man. I uh, appreciate it. That means so a lot. Keep, it really does. Keep, keep doing that. And, uh, you know, also enjoy fatherhood. Yeah. Uh, I know that, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I'm headed that way. As soon as we jump off, you do that to just know that you're going to, you know, you're going to be wrong a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So, Swallow that pill. Cause it's <laughs> that, that, well, I that's appreciate okay. it. Um, hopefully everybody was able to, like I always say, is able to just take one thing away. Hopefully you learned something can implement in your own life. Um, that's, that's the purpose of these conversations is to just continue to help people find themselves grow um, and continue to love life. So until uh, next week's episode, love you guys. Talk to you soon.